Ryan, what's the vision here? Well, what you're looking at is the first small modular reactor being built in the G7. Uh, so quite an exciting uh, time for Ontario power generation and the province and the country. In short, they're called SMRs, a smaller version of a nuclear reactor, creating a lot of buzz in the energy market. Ontario is the place to be when it comes to nuclear energy. It's going to really shape the future of the nuclear industry. And help Canada be an energy superpower. It's the Darlington New Nuclear Phase 1. According to Prime Minister Mark Carney. This project will make Canada the first G7 country to have a small modular nuclear reactor. He singled out this build as one of five big infrastructure projects central to his promise. Reliable, affordable, clean power to 300,000 homes, while sustaining 3,700 jobs every year over the next 65 years. What's new about this? We've done nuclear in this province for decades. The reactors we've built to date are, are large-scale reactors. This is a small modular reactor, so a little smaller in megawatt output. However, it can be done in a modular fashion uh, in an effort to make sure we build it on schedule and on budget. This is just the first reactor. This site is already being prepared for reactor two, three, and four, which is expected to be complete by the mid 2030s. In total, 1200 megawatts of electricity. At a cost for all four of nearly $21 billion. It's simply but this longtime nuclear expert is cautious. That $21 billion price tag for the Darlington project will go up. Alison McFarlane, a former chair of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, now a director at the University of British Columbia. The small modular reactors, they've never been built, and so there's a lot of uncertainty about them and a lot of uncertainty about the cost, especially. There's actually 10 major forgings in this unit. Right now, there's a lot of discussion over the small modular reactor, not just in Canada, in the US, and North America, but ultimately around the world. There's a lot of conceptual discussion on SMRs, but this one's actually being built. GE Vernova Hitachi, a US-Japanese alliance, developed the design. A company in Cambridge, Ontario, is manufacturing the reactor pressure vessel, or RPV. The cylinders from Italy will be configured here at BWXT and ultimately welded into one unit. These cylinders get joined together into a larger unit, which is going to be about approximately 100 feet long and 600 tons in weight. So this thing ultimately is going to create the steam that is going to drive a steam turbine. And that is going to drive a generator which creates electricity. Canada has 70 years of nuclear experience. Small modular is the newest iteration, bringing the prospect of more jobs and another market for Canadian uranium from Saskatchewan. But the small modular reactor is unique. The reactor here needs enriched uranium, which can't be done in Canada. So Canadian uranium will be sent to the US to get enriched and then transported back here. A potentially weak link in the supply chain, says Jack Gibbons. It will require us to import enriched uranium from the United States to fuel these reactors, um, imports which Donald Trump could um, cut off at, at a moment's notice. Ontario Power Generation says a French company can also supply enriched uranium, but Clean Air Alliance wants to curtail nuclear development. We got much wind and solar, battery storage, energy efficiency are all much, much lower cost and they're much quicker options. Carney wants to please Doug Ford and uh, Doug Ford loves nuclear power and the fossil fuel industry likes it because it's so slow and high cost that it won't displace them. Nuclear energy has long been a battleground. Protests at Darlington in the 1970s tried to shut down the plant. Big debt dogged that project. It nearly doubled in costs by the time Darlington went online in the early 1990s. Nuclear grew anyway. Please stay indoors with your windows closed. But the accidents at Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, and the most recent, Fukushima, Japan, put a pall on the industry. You can see this uh, 
concrete truck here spinning. Nearly 15 years later, nuclear is hot again. It's quite a, I don't, dare I say renaissance, but definitely a movement to, back towards nuclear uh, lately in the industry. So why? Well, rising demand for electricity, including for new AI data centers. Also, a push for cleaner power. Once built, there are few carbon emissions. I would never advocate shutting down nuclear power right now. It is providing carbon-free electricity. Absolutely, we need that. that. The climate change is the real problem facing us. I am a pragmatic person, and so I don't want us spending lots of money on something that's going to take a very long time to become a reality. What's the advantage of making it? So we asked Ontario's Minister of Energy and Mines, why more nuclear? We are the developer building out the first small modular reactor in the G7 before the Americans and the Brits and the French. Here we are, Ontario, and I want Canadians to be proud. Like, we have to flex our muscle. Who's going to come up with the $21 billion? Ratepayers will be paying for this. Uh, and from the federal provincial governments together, they're going to help invest in the project. Does that mean that the feds and Canadian taxpayers will pay for Darlington? They will pay for a, a component of it. I mean, the national government invests in large scale energy projects in all provinces. Standing here, we don't know how much it's going to cost exactly. What happens if the costs balloon? They have in previous nuclear projects in this province. There's no question about it. Yeah, I mean, you know, going back governments of the past, so that is possible and that is true. But look, for us, when it comes to our project discipline on large scale refurbishments, we've done it on time and on budget. Demand for power is only going up. On this path and with powerful backers, nuclear appears to have found a market again.